Hello and welcome to our fifth video in our mod tutorial series. I'm Dragon and we are going to talk about parameters. Country parameters, province parameters, custom to countries and relation parameters. All of them you can edit in those editors here. So I'm going to focus on the first country parameters editor to explain you how parameters in this game work. So first of all, let me start by opening the country parameters editor. Here is the pre-generated country parameters list on the left. And as you can see, even in an empty scenario, there are a lot of parameters already set up. This list on the left is very important because those are the base parameters that are used in the game to calculate basically everything. And here on the right, each parameter, after you select it, has its own modifiers. So this is the parameter. And these are its modifiers that are affecting how this parameter is calculated. Let's take money. This is an easy example. Money, your actual value of money that your country has in any moment, is calculated by only monthly money income. So this parameter here above the money. So how does this work? Well, it's pretty simple. Basically, you need to choose a parameter here from this list. These are all parameters created by game developers for the RealPolitics 2. For example, let's choose army limit and add it as a base parameter. And as you can see, it's, it was already here on the list, but we've added it again. I do not recommend adding duplicate uh, parameters, so I'm going to delete this previous one by clicking remove base parameter. And now I'm going to select army limit and it's empty right now. It has no modifiers. So we are going to add them. And army limit is a basic parameter that limits the number of military units your country can have in any given moment. And you can change how that value is calculated. For example, you can take some specific modifiers from this list and apply it to army limit. So let's, for example, take province count. This is a very useful modifier and add it here to the list of army limit modifiers. When modifier is added, you have a lot of options to edit it. First of all, you can edit it using curve editor by clicking this button here, show curve. And this is a very simple window that you can scroll around here by holding your left mouse button. You can zoom in and out using your scroll on your mouse. And this is basically a function, a graph curve that you can edit by double clicking the red squares here. And also you can add new red squares or points of interest on your uh, curve by right clicking anywhere on this canvas. And to delete such points of interest, red squares, you can hold them with your left mouse button and simply move them away behind the border of the window. All right, so how does this work? One of the axes represents province count and the other axis represents army limit. So for example, if this country has one province, it modifies army limit by one. That means that one province increases army limit by one. It's pretty straightforward. So if you would like the province count to actually affect army limit, you could simply change that value here. And it would be a flat modifier. So for example, if a country has 10 provinces, it would increase its army limit by 100. You have to scroll away to find our point of interest here again. But that would be pretty boring because first of all, until a country would have 10 provinces, it wouldn't have this modifier. So it would be pretty behind every other country that has at least 10 provinces. So what we should do is to add more points here on this graph. And you could say that when country has only one province, it increases its army limit by 10. And now we have created a linear progression of modifier for our parameter. Basically, when province count increases by one, so does the army limit times 10. So if my province count is five, it will increase my army limit by 50. 
and it is capped here at 10 province count. So if I have 25 provinces, my army limit would still be modified only by 100. But you could also increase this value here, for example, to 100 provinces and 1000 army limit. And now when I scroll away, I can see that indeed, when I reach province count of 100, my army limit would be modified by 1000. And that would be the limit. And that is one way to edit your base parameters and their modifiers. You can save this curve that you have created to a file on your drive and you can load it. So it is very useful if you are using a lot of similar graphs to edit some modifiers. And after editing the curve, I recommend clicking Save to Modifier button. That way, this curve that you have created is now saved here. If you would switch to another parameter and return, it's still here as we have set it up. You could also rescale modifier from 0 to 100%. That only works for some parameters and some modifiers. And you could also use this ticker here. And after enabling it, you could enter here a flat value. Basically, this button here overrides the curve uh, settings. And by entering a value here, you multiply the province count by this value. So for example, if I entered here a value of 10, and my country would have five provinces, my RLM limit would increase by 50. Because province count is five, times 10, it's 50. And that is how you edit one single modifier. But of course, you can add more modifiers. For example, I would like totalitarism political system to increase my army limit of my country. So I'm going to choose totalitarism from the top down and I'm going to click add modifier. And now we have two modifiers for my army limit. And things get a little bit complicated. So we need to use those stickers down here in the parameters editor. Most of those settings are mutually exclusive. So when you, for example, enable this sticker, it is not recommended to, for example, enable also this one. That is because those stickers change how those modifiers are calculated and also how they affect the base parameter. So let me go through those options here one by one. First of all, the first option, add the values of all modifiers to the selected base parameter per interval. Our default interval is one day. If so, if I were to enable this ticker here, we do not want that as after a couple of days, our army limit would basically be unlimited. Because every day you would add our province count times 10 and our system. Let me set up the totalitarianism effect on uh, army limit, for example, as a flat 20. So if I if my country has a totalitarianism political system, its army limit would increase by 20 here. And so, if I were to enable this sticker, my army limit would every day increase by, for example, 50 plus 20, so 70 each day. And that is not how army limit should work. So, this is not the right ticker for this particular parameter. The second option, multiply the selected base parameter by the values of all modifiers plus one. For example, GDP, that's how GDP works. And it is also not how army limit works because GDP is increased by its GDP growth every month. And that means, this sticker means that all of those mo modifiers multiply the base value of this parameter. So that is also not the right setting for our army limit parameter. The third, option here is change intervals from one per day to one per calendar month, not 30 days, it's calendar months. So for example, in February, it would be 28 days or 29 days in leap year. And the third option here is also not the right option for our army limit parameter because army limit should be refreshed every day. So let's go to the fourth option here. Multiply modifiers by themselves instead of adding them to each other. Example, taxes. And that is not something that we want to check right now, because that would also mean that our province count value would multiply our totalitarianism value. So in this case, it would be, for example, 50 from five provinces times 20. 
and that would be 1000. So that would be a little bit too much for our army limit. But if I instead changed my totalitarianism to, for example, 1.2, that would actually make sense. Because then I could check this ticker here, and the province count army limit value, in this example 50, would be in totalitarianism system multiplied by 1.2. So that would mean that when I am not a totalitarian country, my army limit would be 50 with five provinces. And when my system would change to totalitarianism, my army limit would increase to 60. And that seems pretty reasonable. But let me go back to totalitarianism giving me a flat 20 army limit increase. Because that means that we have to leave all those options unchecked. And that is actually how the default modifiers work. They simply determine the value of army limit by adding all of those modifiers. So in this case, it would be province count, for example, 50, and totalitarianism plus 20. Let me show you another example. I will remove both of those modifiers right now. And I will show you how to create a fixed army limit. If you would like in your mod for each country to have a fixed army limit, for example, of 20 units, you could add here the base modifier, click the sticker get percent value, and enter, for example, number 20, and save to modifier. And now army limit would always be 20, because base is a base value, standard starting value of this parameter here. And because there are no other modifiers, army limit will not change throughout the game. Let me now show you how money parameter works, again, now that you know what these modifiers do. So in this example, monthly money income is supposed to change each month our present money value. So this ticker here, get percent value, with the value of 1, means that 100% of our monthly money income is going to be added to money. And because this ticker here is enabled, that will happen each calendar month. And this ticker here is enabled, which actually means that this value will be indeed added to the base parameter of money. In real politics 2, we have a lot of parameter types. We have country parameters, and we also have province parameters, which have their own unique province parameters list here. But you can modify those parameters using any modifiers. The modifier list is the same. That is important because GDP growth is a country parameter, but only provinces have GDP parameter. So the GDP parameter of each province in a country is each month changed, modified by GDP growth. And here is the example of a parameter that is multiplied by its modifiers. Each calendar month because those two tickers are enabled. You could also create your own custom province parameters and your own custom parameters for country. What is also important, you can change the order of the parameters on the list. This determines in what order those parameters are going to be counted in your country. And that could be important. It would be wise to first count that modifier before you count the parameter that depends on it. There are also two countries parameters that you can add, and we also have special relation parameters. Relation parameters are actually modifiers for the relation value between uh, different countries. Each country has a relation value with each other country in the game, and these are all modifiers of that value. So for example, in the preloaded scenario, base relations are at 50, and high warmonger decreases that value by minus 5. If a country has the same parties as another country, their relations would be increased by 10, and so on and so forth. Here in the relation parameters, there is also an additional important editor. Here you can set up values for different penalties to relations after certain actions that countries have taken. And by actions, I mean diplomatic actions, like leaving block, penalty after war, penalty after breaking alliance, bonus for the liberators. So for example, when one country liberates another, the liberated country has a bonus with their liberators. 
and also traitors, which basically means a country that has broken non-aggression treaty or defense pact and attacked another country. Here you can set up the duration of such penalty, and here you can set up the basic value of that penalty or bonus. And here you can also input names to customize them even further. Parameters are the single most important tool to create your own unique experience in your own scenario or mod to Realpolitics 2. I highly recommend checking out those lists of modifiers and base parameters, and I also recommend experimenting with them to achieve interesting results. This is a highly customizable aspect of the game, and you can create your own unique experience by, for example, changing action points to something completely different, like diplomatic points, or even indeed water supplies, or paper supplies, or power of information, or anything else you could imagine. After setting up your parameters, I would also recommend checking out the default values editor. Here is a lot of important input fields for specific values that change how the game is played. All of those parameters are explained in our mod tool manual, so I'm going to cover only some of them. The first one here is pretty important because it determines how much of a debt a country can have. In this case, a country can have only 50% of its GDP as debt. So for example, if country has 1000 GDP, its debt can only reach 500 before this country goes bankrupt. Also, this important parameter here, max political parameter change, determines how much a political parameter can change during elections. The value of free here means that when we have three political parameters, militarism, personal control, and interventionism, your total political parameter sum can change only by nine. And that is important because it determines how often would political system change in the country as an effect of elections. And this was our parameters and default values video. Thank you for watching and see you next time.